Hi, Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. Welcome again to our studio and to our event that Restart Initiative and um, Heritage School organized in Berlin. Thank you for the invitation. Always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, Benjamin, uh, let's talk first about the event that is uh, happening now in Berlin. Um, what is your impression? What has been discussed between Armenian and Azerbaijan experts? And yeah, what, what ideas have been floating? This was the seventh dialogue in the project Economic Dialogue Armenia-Azerbaijan. And this dialogue was focused first on skill development. I believe it's a quite important issue. But also there was a meeting of steering committee of the project and we discussed how we may move forward in 2024, what dialogues can be implemented, what are the topics which will be interesting and useful both for Armenia and Azerbaijan and also for international community. I believe the <coughs> event and meeting was quite helpful and quite useful. Uh, we have clear path ahead of us and I think that uh, this project has all chances to be continued and to be successful. Um, what do you think about the current state of affairs uh, between Armenia and the current state of negotiations? After the September 2023 military takeover of Nagorno-Karabakh by Azerbaijan, there were mixed feelings in Armenia, Azerbaijan and the international community. Some hoped that the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh status, the future of Armenia there, was the primary obstacle for reaching peace between Armenia and Azerbaijan and there were hopes, or thoughts at least, that despite the fact that what happened with Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia is a tragedy, but maybe it will facilitate the signature of peace process. Simultaneously, there were people and experts who were arguing that Nagorno-Karabakh issue was not the only obstacle on Armenia-Azerbaijan peace and what happened with Nagorno-Karabakh will not facilitate the peace process even more, it will complicate because maybe Azerbaijan would lose its uh, only incentive to sign peace agreement as soon as possible. What we saw in October-November 2023 probably was a more justification of second option because we thought that no negotiations were happening, Azerbaijan was not willing to negotiate in Western platforms, Armenia had doubts on resuming negotiations in Russian platform, so there was a no negotiation. There was a hope, there were hopes that okay, meeting between President Aliyev and Prime Minister Pashinyan might take place in Granada in early October, then in late October in Brussels, then Americans jumped in. The idea was to organize a meeting between foreign ministers on November 20. But Azerbaijan rejected all these claims for different reasons. And at the beginning of December, there was a feeling that the peace process is stalled and there were concerns that in the case of absence of peace negotiations, a military escalation may happen, if not now, at least in spring summer 2024. Then we had this December 7, 2023 joint Armenia-Azerbaijan statement, or the statement of Prime Administration of Prime Minister of Armenia and the Presidential Administration of Azerbaijan, about uh, two sides' willingness to continue negotiations to reach peace, and also a very important step was taken. Azerbaijan released 32 uh, servicemen and Armenia released two Azerbaijani uh, servicemen. So the December 7th statement proved that still negotiations were continuing, this time on bilateral level, and which could give us some hope that if this uh, trend will continue, then probably at least negotiations will not be stalled, which means that the threat of new escalation will go down. Of course, now in Armenia we hope that this positive step in humanitarian direction will continue and all other remaining de detainees will be freed soon. Yeah, and what do you think about the... Um, uh, let's say, let's assume that the peace agreement will be signed at the end. Yeah, this will be the scenario. If this happens, uh, where do you think strategically uh, Armenian and Azerbaijani governments, but also civil societies, should cooperate? What should be like two, three most important strategic focus points which could help these societies, if not reconciliate, but at least to start the normalization process and develop it? One buzzword which is now very popular in Armenia is diversification. All, regardless of their political affiliation and regardless of their other views, 
peaks at Armenian need diversification, both foreign policy diversification and also economic diversification. Of course, there are different approaches, some see the diversification as some anti-Russian steps that okay, we should be uh, far we should move, we should start our movement away from Russia, we should be anti-Russia. Some are saying that, okay, let's not replace or confuse diversification with anti-Russian policy. But again, all agree that Armenia needs foreign policy diversification and economic diversification, because the current geopolitical situation in South Caucasus is completely different than we have only 10 years ago, for example, in 2013. That is why if situation was changed, your foreign policy and your economic policy should be changed too. And of course, when we are speaking about diversification, regardless, uh, these are people who have pro-Russian sentiment or anti-Russian sentiment, they understand that also diversification means diversification from Russia, because currently, at least at the economic level, Armenia is very dependent on Russia. On import, on export market, like approximately 50% of Armenian export goes to Russia. We are receiving 100% of domestic consumption natural gas from Russia. Yes, we also receive gas from Iran, but this gas is being transformed into electricity and then be re-exported to Iran. So in this case, if Armenia-Azerbaijan peace agreement is signed, and if there will be a possibility for Armenia-Azerbaijan economic cooperation, I believe that in Armenia people will be interested to see how this potential Armenia-Azerbaijan economic cooperation may facilitate the diversification of Armenia's economy. I think this is an issue on which experts not only like geopolitical experts, but also economists, experts in trades and etc. can look deeper in 2024. Again, let's hope that we will have a peace agreement. And if there is a peace agreement, number one issue which can be discussed, is it possible to use this emerging or starting Armenia-Azerbaijan economic cooperation to facilitate the process of diversification of Armenia's economy? Well, thank you, Benjamin, very much for coming to our event, contributing intellectually to what, where this project could go next, uh, and in general, you know, where this relationship, this cooperation between Azerbaijan and Armenia could go in the nearest future. And thank you for giving us interview once more. Thank, thank you, Ivan. Thank you.